it's so great to see all of you and welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm Rebecca Keener and this is Ann White. We're together again yes. and we have a powerful night tonight, don't we? We do. It always seems that everyone comes together with a unified message. It's yeah. interesting how we'll just it's have, you know, way. guests come in from different yeah. walks of life and areas of life and yet God just kind of knits them together. So we do have an amazing show and an amazing message for you tonight. Yes, thank you so much for being with us. And we know the Lord's going to meet you right there and encourage mm -hmm. you in a mighty way. There's a common theme here that the Lord is going to use all of us in these end times to do His work and to build His kingdom. So Amen. we want to inspire you tonight with that message. We have with us a just a, a neat young couple. Mm -hmm. I love them already. Frank and Lakeisha Johnson. Uh, they are with Kingdom Plug and Ministries, and they have some great ministry going on in the city of Atlanta. They do, and they and have an got, amazing testimony as well. They and really we do. Heard bits and pieces. I could have sat there. More. Yeah, I could have sat there for a long time listening <laughs> to them, and just but we the, want them to share it with you. Yes, and then also we have none other than Dr. Richard Blackaby mm -hmm. in the house tonight, and we're just so thrilled to have him. Uh, his family runs Blackaby Ministry. You may remember them or recognize them from experiencing God, that great, yes. great uh, study that many of us have done and, and just changes your life. So anyway, just two great guests already that you're going to be blessed yes, with. Yes, and we have more guests to come. We have a group here that's going to be ministering to us music-wise, and I'll tell you about them in a minute, but our third guest, interview guest for tonight is Beaver Robertson. He's with Heartbound Ministries and also Chris McDaniel Ministries. They work together, have an amazing testimony, a powerful testimony of really coming out of a very difficult walk, childhood, and life, and just being transformed completely by God. And so they're really going to minister to you tonight, and I think um, their testimonies will speak volumes. So Beaver Robertson, and then he's he'll be joined by Chris McDaniel, who is leading Connective Worship. There, um, they call it Connective Worship. He's is led by Chris McDaniel, and it's a group of worship leaders throughout Tennessee and Georgia who come together to minister to you and I and to minister to many groups all around the uh, many states here in the United States. So let's hear Chris McDaniel and Connective Worship with The Whole Earth Sings.
best for you. We pour out our best for you. We pour out our best for you. We pour out our best for you. Oh, now we pour out our best for you. 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 We pour out recognize Chris McDaniel from Confederate Railroad. If you're a country music fan, you'll remember Confederate Railroad. And Chris had a life change. I don't know where he was from, but I was about to run <laughs> and dance and jump and right. everything else. We'll hear more from them in just a we few minutes. We need to get up there and dance with them. We, 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 got, we, we need to shake this up a little bit tonight. <laughs> Y'all better stay tuned because you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> That's very true. That's, That's very true. Yeah, and isn't it great how the Lord has just taken him from Confederate Railroad and just using him in such a great way yep. in the ministry and praise God for life that. Life change. Yeah. You know, and we're all about that. That's God is right. in the transformation business. Ta talk about life change. We Our next Yes. Guest. Oh, boy. I just can't wait to hear from them. Such a beautiful couple. Uh, tonight, we want to welcome Frank and Lakeisha Johnson, and they're with Kingdom Plug Ministry. Yes. And uh, just a great couple doing great things in the city of Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta. We are so Thank you. Thank you. So happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Match. Yes. That was intentional. That was on purpose. <laughs> You've been married 10 years. Well, actually, together for 10 years. 10 years. Uh, married for two and a half. Two and, and a half. half. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. A little oh, bit. Yes. God's <laughs> using you in a great yes. way. Yes. Tell us a little bit how, uh, what you're doing in your ministry, Frank, and how the Lord's using you guys and raised you up. Share also about where the Lord has brought you from and okay. how he's changed your life. Absolutely. Um, God has just been doing some amazing things with our life. Um, we came from a space, uh, the secular space, of promoting parties and concerts. And um, I just felt compelled to use my gift that God placed in me to... Um, to bring change to the world and show people that it's actually cool uh, to do things the kingdom way. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times the, the trick that the enemy uses, he uses the trick to, to make us think that it's cool to do all the negative things, all the things that actually destroy you. Um, but the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And uh, what I realized, I was dying a spiritual death and uh, a few times almost died a couple natural deaths from um, yep. near life and death situations with drinking and driving and just a number of things. And um, God delivered me from those things. And I, I just feel compelled that it's our job once you're delivered to use your story and use your platform to help someone else get delivered. Amen. That mm -hmm. is so true. And, you know, it's easy to get sucked into that lifestyle of, you know, 
you guys were promoting concerts, so Absolutely. every Friday and Saturday night Absolutely. or probably during the weeks. Absolutely. Tell us about what your life was like you know, during those weeks when you were doing concert promotions I in mean, a secular Oh arena. my goodness, I mean, it was, uh, like you said, three, four nights a week sometimes. I mean, you're talking about three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. And you know, of course, with that lifestyle, it comes a lot with that. You know, the drinking, the staying out late, the partying, because you have to have or keep up so you think that lifestyle, and it came at a cost. It, it came at a cost, and this was even long before we were married. Um, you know, fast forward when we even were married, I mean, it, it we dealt with some things even with us. Um, like I said, I've almost lost my husband on multiple times. Um, fell asleep at the wheel, that's just to name a few. Um, honestly, we shouldn't even be married today, to be honest with you. We should have been long divorced, but you know, but God, I, I can only say that, but God, and we're here today. But by the grace of God. Amen. And you've got a passion and a heart for the homeless. Absolutely. And that's really kind of what yes. your ministry is all about yes. or the heart of your ministry. Yes. Just tell us how that was birthed and Absolutely. what you're doing to help homeless. Believe it or not, even before we were married, Frank and I always had just a concern for people who are less fortunate. Um, it's just so interesting how you know, just walking through life, it's almost seemed like homelessness is just like a part of the day. And that shouldn't be. Um, we used to even take it upon ourselves. We would just cook meals just randomly, pack them up, just take them downtown where, where we came from and, and, and just help. And so now we just really want to develop and build that culture of serving. That's all we want to do. And we just want people to grasp the, the point of you can do something. You can start wherever you are, um, you know, whatever it is, cook a big pot of spaghetti, pack it up, take it out, you know, and you never know just how you taking that initiative of serving can bring hope to someone. And believe it or not, to be honest, to be very transparent with, transparent with you, um, years ago, um, my husband and I, actually, it was going to be my husband's first day on the job, and uh, this is a true story, um, our lights were shut off, mm. and we were standing in the, in the line of a crisis ministry line, mm. and my husband looked at me and said, you know what, there's people out here who needs this more than we do. And so for a couple of days, we, we did the, you know, candlelight yeah. dinner for a couple of days. <laughs> That's but right. it was very humbling to realize this is people's lives in real life. Yeah. Right. People deal with this every day. Um, and by the grace of God, it just uh, really, I think, even more made us more um, open to really seeing the things that hurt God. Mm -hmm. And we're like, God, we got to pay more attention to that. So fast forward, we're here now in Atlanta. I've been here about two and a half years um, and we're just using, you know, our platform and our business to just bring that awareness. Uh, we have an awesome upcoming event and we're just using that to, you know, bring awareness. Our goal is a thousand meals and a thousand toiletry kits. Wow. We are going to do it. And so we're just getting people to get involved and they can actually go to website. our website, uh, www.keenumplug.com www.kingdomplug.com. So the event, tell me a little bit about the event and what, what the event's all about. Oh, great. Yeah, the event is a phenomenal event. It's a worship event. It's going to feature uh, a, a few gospel artists, uh, Todd Galbraith, mm -hmm. uh, Benita Jones, um, Enrique Holmes, and um, worship leader at our church, Bernard Williams. Yay. And uh, so we just use that platform, not only just for the worship experience, but we believe that, you know, after you leave out those doors, you know, what type of impact are you having in the community? So we, we just really want to use that event to, to highlight uh, this initiative and bring awareness to the community in regards to um, the plight that What a suffering. great way to inspire people. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I, I was saying on the way over here in traffic today, in two and a half hours of traffic today, that I don't know what I'd do without music, without God's mm -hmm. music, oh. mm -hmm. just to keep me in a worshipful spirit. Mm -hmm. And it does inspire you in a lot of ways. Absolutely. So I think that's beautiful. You mentioned your church. Yeah. It's linked up. Is that yes. right? Linked up church. Yes. Right. Passage, Passage Joel and Patricia Gregory, awesome ministry. Absolutely transformed our lives, as a matter of fact, um, right in Marietta. Um, we're actually going to be moving to Powder Springs soon, so I'm really excited about that. But awesome ministry um, led by those two amazing, amazing people. And it's just been, I, if you knew us just before we met that church, what you're seeing here is a miracle. Wow. Absolutely. That, and that's beautiful. That's that's the beauty of God. Mm -hmm. He is yeah. still in the miracle business. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you've been transformed. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. But then your passion for music that you had before, mm -hmm. uh, in your pre in your walk before the Lord, mm -hmm. 
now he's using in the Christian realm and yes. build yes. the kingdom of God. Absolutely. And um, I actually grew up as a church drummer. From the age of seven, I was a staff musician, even through um, a, a time period in my adulthood. Um, that's what I did to pay my bills. I was a professional drummer. So you can play. That's what we need think. to hear you. You need to go over there and just <laughs> let it rip for us. We already have someone on set tonight. <laughs> I've taken a couple years off, so um, I think I still could probably do it a little you bit. You could, baby. Uh, you could. Um, but, but, you know, it's always been a passion, and uh, I remember one thing. My father passed about five years ago, mm -hmm. and I was in college, and uh, I was starting to play out in the clubs, taking all types of gigs and things, and he just looked at me one day and said, you, you can't do it all, you know, you have to pick one, right? <laughs> and uh, he just looked at me and he said that statement and we moved on. We just finished up barbecuing ribs or whatever. <laughs> but that's a statement that always stuck with me. And um, there were nights when um, I was out in the club playing and things of that nature and that thought would just come to mind. It's like, you, you can't do them both. So I, I eventually knew that this day would come where that transformation would have to take place. So it was a choice. Absolutely. Yeah, it choice. was a choice. Talk about how y'all met. Did y'all meet in the industry? Oh my goodness, believe it or not. Oh my goodness. We actually uh, attended the same university in Charlotte, North Carolina, John C. C. Smith University. Shout out Golden Bulls. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was crazy because it was my senior year. Um, I was a dancer in the marching band, um, captain. <laughs> and my husband um, actually came back. He's a little older than me. So he came back for, it was homecoming. And I was not even studying him at all. And so he l just randomly walked up to me. And he was just like, well, what are you doing in five years? And I'm like, I don't even, I'm trying to graduate on time, let alone <laughs> five years. And we just got together like that. Um, and honestly, we've been together ever since, going on 10 years now. She, wow. she left out the part where she stalked me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's always two sides <laughs> to the story, right, Rebecca? <laughs> Actually, he's, he's telling the truth. He's, he's definitely telling the you truth. You know, and I appreciate you admitting that because I kind of <laughs> did the same thing with my husband. <laughs> we've been married now 32, 32 wow. years this fall. Wow. And it, yeah. Yeah. We met in high school and it was like, I knew. Yeah, I knew he was and it's so one. funny because um, at the time, and I had never saw him again after that, and um, I was looking for a church home at mm -hmm. the time, and a good friend of mine, matter of fact, one of the young ladies who I danced with on the team, uh, she was like, come and, come and go to church with me. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to church with you. She's like, no, come <laughs> to church with me. And I remember, this was like a year after, or some change after I met him, and I saw him playing on the drums at church, and I was like, I know that guy. And wow. so this is when Facebook was fairly new. So like a stalker, I found him on Facebook. I'm like, hey, I came Just to your church out. today. And it was all she wrote after that. But that's God. That's <laughs> God. It sure is. Yeah. You know, I, I keep thinking about your ministry to the homeless. I think, you know, I just have a passion for ministry to yes. homeless as well. And um, I just was thinking about maybe testimonies, something, mm -hmm. Frank, that you've, you know, maybe an impact with one particular person that, mm -hmm. or you know, a connection with somebody that you've seen the Lord work. Do you, do you have something off the top? Uh, uh, you're on the spot. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Um, there's actually, um, I owe someone something and I have, yes. to, I owe someone something yes. this week. Yes. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were out uh, feeding the homeless and um, we were just doing our calculations, trying to figure out how many, how much it would cost to feed a thousand people and provide a thousand toiletry pits. So it's like seven o'clock at night. Yeah. I told Lakeisha, I said, well, let's just go to the grocery store, pick up some things and figure out the quantities. Mm -hmm. And um, so we did that. That was the night before. The next day we prepared the meals and I had like a thousand things to get done with business. We canceled that and yep. we just fixed plates and mm -hmm. we went out and we took them to um, ourselves. We're that's good. right. Yep. Um, we, we took them out to a park mm -hmm. on Piedmont, I believe, Piedmont Road. And uh, there was a young gentleman there and yeah. he's just a couple years older than me. Yeah. And uh, he had on some sandals. And it was raining. It was raining. It was raining. It was pouring down raining. And, and I felt convicted afterwards because he was, he was like, if you have some more shoes, yeah. um, you know, I would really want your shoes. Yeah. He said, or if you have some more shoes, you know, can I have some shoes? And I said, well, what size do you wear? And he said, 10 and a half. <laughs> I said, oh. wow. I wear a ten and a he half. He wears a ten and a half. So I told him, I said, you know what? I don't have any shoes with me, but 
I will be back. So this week I have to go back mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and deliver those shoes. Exactly. But it's just the small things. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got home, I actually thought about it. My wife said it. She was like, you know what would have been cool? If you would just took off your shoes and gave it to them. Uh -huh. And that's the type of servant heart I believe we all should have. Mm -hmm. um, I have more than enough shoes. I could have very easily took them off yeah. and, and gave them to them, but I do own that pair of shoes. <laughs> that's oh, awesome. God bless you. That's and great. That. Yeah. Well, I know you're excited about the event coming mm -hmm. up, and we talked about um, the website, mm -hmm. and we'll mention it again here in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But talk a little bit more about that ministry mm -hmm. and um, just the awareness. You've talked about how everyone has the ability to do something, exactly. to give something. Exactly. Speak to that. Speak to the audience and, mm -hmm. and what's on your heart about what God shared with you and to challenge people. Absolutely. So what we want to do, the whole purpose of um, our business is we're an entertainment and marketing firm. And how we, what we do is we use our platform through live events to not just bring people together, but we focus on different initiatives throughout each quarterly event. And this particular event is just um, specifically for homeless. And so we, we want people to not just come and worship and have a great time and enjoy. Of course, we want them, but we are deliberately and intentionally building a culture of serving. We want people to understand that together we can do this. We don't have to wait for someone else to do it. We don't have to, you know, depend on the government or anything like that. We can do it. It's our job. Matter of fact, in the books, book of Acts, it said they had all things in common. And so that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. And there was no lack. Was yeah, and we were talking. We were talking before the program about building king the kingdom yes. of God, yes. and I love how you're extending invitations to other churches. Yes, because that's kingdom work and, and exactly. encouraging them to be exactly. a part. And that's well, what we do. And that's what we do. We literally, my husband, as a matter of fact, he will call. We call local churches. We call businesses. Even um, we're actually connecting with uh, businesses at our church and even outside of our church. Hey, let's do this thing together. Um, matter of fact, my husband found a very interesting fact 276 billion dollars touch Atlanta mm -hmm. and we have 3,500 people who are homeless in Atlanta wow. so surely we can do something say Everyone that again how something. many people homeless in Thir it's over 3,500 wow here in Atlanta homeless and mm -hmm. about if I'm not mistaken about 25 30 percent if I'm not mistaken is women and children mm -hmm. so it's a serious 40%, issue yeah 40 percent yeah, is women That's women right. and children so we we have to do better you know we have to do better and when you break the numbers down it's no it's no reason why we have homelessness here Amen. No and I, I love what you're saying too about being connected because yes. we are the body of Christ yes and I think so often we get off in our own separate ministries and we kind of doing our own thing and exactly. kind of protect our that's not what it's about, that's right. you know, it's, it's, no. it's about connecting, being the body of Christ, being called in together. Mm -hmm. And so I absolutely love, mm -hmm. so your website is kingdomplug.com, kingdomplug.com. There, you're gonna check there it out. are people watching us at home tonight and something is stirring in you and leaping in you and you have a heart for the homeless. And there's something that this couple that has, has said that you feel connected to. I would encourage you go to their website and check it out and go to the event and connect with them. It's all about kingdom connections and you never know what God will do. And um, so it, we just take our little part and we bring it and we just, you know, give it to the Lord and he multiplies it. He and that's what you've done. You're, you've inspired us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful Thank couple. You so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank yeah. You. And you know, I think what's so interesting is that we're talking about connections. Yeah. You know, and our band tonight is Connected Worship. Yeah. You know, it's really all about, let's let's go in this That's together. Right. And so That's right. We're going to hear from them again, as a matter of fact, here in just a moment. And yeah. Chris McDaniel and Connected Worship, the Lion and the Lamb. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. So
fantastic. And you know what? God is a chain breaker. He can break those chains that are binding you tonight. And I just want you to know, you know, God doesn't call us in to walk this life alone. I spent many years even walking in the doors of church, isolating myself, not sharing my problems and my struggles with anybody because I thought that's what I needed to do in order to protect myself and not be judged. But I want you to know God doesn't want you there. Matter of fact, he wants you to come out and be transparent and share with others. He calls us into relationship with one another to lift one another up, to sharpen one another, encourage one another, and pray for one another that we might be healed. So I want to encourage you tonight. We have a prayer room. The number's right there on the screen, 770-300-9828. And I want to encourage you to call in in prayer because prayer is powerful and God is in the business of doing miracles and breaking down those chains, breaking down the barriers in your life. So I want you to join us tonight and call in and let us know what's going on in your life. If you don't know Jesus, if you've not surrendered your life to Christ and you're ready to bend the knee and say, Lord, I want you to be part of my life and I want to surrender my life to you, then tonight's the night to do that. There's no time better than right this moment for you to surrender your life over to Christ. Or if like me, I was a Christian as a young child, but really didn't surrender until probably about 20 years ago. And I grew very slowly. If you need to rededicate your life, then I want you to share that with us. Let us come alongside you and pray with you and agree with you that you might be healed, that you might be lifted up and you might be covered in prayer because that's what this station is here for. We really want to lift you up and bring you together. I hope you're enjoying tonight's music. I hope you're enjoying tonight's guest. As soon as we come back from our prayer room, then we're going to be visiting with Dr. Richard Blackaby, and we're excited about that, so don't go too far. But I want you to call in now. Call in. Let us hear from you. God bless you. Welcome, everybody. We're in the prayer room here at WATC Atlanta Live, and we just want to welcome you in. There are uh, people standing by tonight who will take your prayer calls, who will pray with you, who will agree with you and believe with you. And we know that in this room, the power of the Holy Spirit is being felt in such a great, great way. And that's what this program really is all about. We're here for you, to pray for you, to encourage you, to stand with you, to believe for healing, to believe for deliverance. And you know, tonight, if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. This is your night. And that's why we're here. That's why we, we drive here to come to this station is so that we can minister to you and stand with you and believe with you and for you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so we want you to take time to do that tonight. And we just agree with you now, according to Romans 10, 9, that says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has was raised from the dead and he is Lord you shall be saved and you know not just you but you can believe for you and your household God has promised us in his word household salvation and so we're going to stand with you tonight we believe with you in Jesus name that he's going to save you deliver you save your family that wayward child that one that's been away from the Lord we stand with you by faith and we believe and receive it by faith in Jesus name 
And we're standing tonight, not just for uh, salvation, but for everyday needs, uh, praying for jobs, praying for healing, praying for provision, asking God just to intervene in your life, to saturate your home with his presence. That's what we need at this hour, at this time. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit in every home in Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. So we believe that tonight. And I just pray with you right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, if that one sitting at home watching me has never received you as Lord and Savior, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I ask you to fill me now and take my life and do something with it powerful and fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire and give me energy and strength to do what you have called me to do. And we're here tonight for the next hour praying with you. Call in. Call into that number or email us your prayer request. That's what we want to do is stand with you and pray and believe that God's going to touch your life in a powerful way. Thank you so much and God bless you and stay with us the rest of the night. We're going back to the music set now with Chris McDaniel. He's going to be singing Who Will Go and Let It Rain. Worship with us tonight. Amen. God bless. There's a lonely man just down the street who needs a helping hand. I'm lost inside his empty house, thinking no one understands. Down at the school, a desperate teen looks hopelessly for love. She doesn't know there's one who cares. There's hope in God above. Trying helplessly to face another day And a young man trapped in Satan's lies And bondage and disgrace Tell me how can those who have the answer Simply turn away Who will stand up in the night Proclaiming Jesus saves Who will go and tell them How he makes the blind to see And how he breaks the chain addiction, how he sets the captive free, who would tell them of the blood that flowed from Calvary, who will go, who will go, who will go, set them free. But just like the man stood before the Lord with the question who will go for us and share his holy word I'm gonna answer as the prophet did his word still sets men free here am I
staring in the mirror I'm seeing clearer than before I am wounded, I am scarred I know my condition Is from the decisions I've made I don't know why I've made it this far It seems that conclusion Is a revolution in my heart It's time to turn this all around As I failed inspection I need a new direction in my life One that leads to higher ground So lay me back in the water In the name of the Father, Spirit, Son Let the old man wash away And thank you, Chris McDaniel, formerly with Confederate Railroad, a, um, I guess a famous country music uh, singer and keyboardist for years who turned his life over to Jesus, had a life transformation, and now he writes. He wrote those two songs, Let It Rain and Who Will Go, and what a wonderful time we're having tonight. Amen. Now he's making Jesus' name famous. Exactly. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I love it. He's decided wow. to go, and we hope you will too. That's so. Well, now we have on the set, we yes. want you to welcome with us someone who I have admired for many, many years, a ministry that has made an impact around the world, the Blackaby Ministry, and we have none other than Dr. Richard Blackaby with us tonight. Please welcome him with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to see you, Dr. Blackaby. Thank you for taking time out to be with us. You are just in from China, is that from right? Thailand. Thailand. Okay, yes. Yeah. Your ministry has really impacted many, many thousands of people's lives in the body of Christ and out and people who aren't Christians and introduce them to Christ. And I want to personally say thank you to you and to your dad and mom for the years of service to the Lord and especially for your dad writing the study, Experiencing God. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about the ministry and how it got started and some of the work that you guys have done through the years. Well, my dad for years was a pastor, uh, left a great church in California, moved to Canada. Church had 10 people with a for sale sign 
up front of the building. Mm. And they said, uh, and my, my uh, dad came and they had no money to pay him, no people to listen to him. But he said, I, but God was with me. And he said, I guess we'll see what God can do. And in the next uh, 12 years, that little church started 38 other churches, started a Bible college. And uh, eventually my dad was asked, well, could you just write and tell us how God plus one person can do so much? And he wrote Experiencing God. Mm. And that just propelled him all around the world. And uh, I, if I can go, I was in China last year. I've been in South America. Wherever I go, people come up and tell me how that material changed their life. And uh, so eventually dad started a ministry, Blackaby Ministries International, that I'm the president of now. And our ministry just goes worldwide, just helping people know how to experience God. And that's beautiful. And I've read the book, you know, many, many years ago, and it really touched me because as a young believer, when I, when I first read, I really wanted to know, how do I experience God? How do you hear God? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just remember that book be, being such a profound impact on my personal life and my walk with the Lord of knowing that we can hear him and here's how we can know and here's how we can truly have that experience with him. Yeah. A lot of people think of God as a doctrine. It's what you believe about God, or he's, a, he's an ethical system. It's, I'm going to be a moral person because I'm a Christian, or I, he's a religious system where I'm going to go to church on Sunday. But a lot of people have never been told God's a person, and he actually wants to relate to you as a person who loves you, and he wants you to love him. And it's great to go to church. It's great to be moral, but there's a lot more to being a Christian, to, to knowing God, than just knowing about God. My dad would say, there's a lot of people who know about God, but they, they have a longing to actually experience him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've also done experiencing God uh, several times. And then I was sharing with you earlier that we did, my husband and I and our marriage ministry at the church we were serving at the time did experiencing God as couples. Yeah. Yeah, that was so powerful. Talk a little bit about your mom and dad and how they, they've been married 58 years. 58, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, they're very opposite people. My mother's an off the charts extrovert. My dad's actually an introvert, shy Canadian. And uh, it's just amazing how God puts very different people together. Uh, and, but my mother was just the woman my dad needed to travel around the world. And, and she often traveled with him. And she just has a, she's a tremendous prayer warrior. And uh, they just love now to sit in their living room and just, they'll just laugh together as they reminisce what God did through two ordinary people. He can. He can do so much. So talk about what it was like growing up in that household yeah. and growing up in that That's experience. That's what we've been <laughs> wanting to know. <laughs> you know, my, my, my parents were not perfect parents. I mean, they, looking back, they broke a number of rules of good parenting. Uh, but all five of their kids are in full-time Christian ministry today. Uh, all 14 of their grandkids are Christians walking with the Lord. Probably at least half of them are headed toward the ministry at this point, and some just aren't old enough to know yet. But the legacy just continues. And I would say it's because God was real to my parents. I, I tell people, it was, growing up was like growing up in George Mueller's orphanage. We were poor. If God didn't provide food, we, did, we weren't sure if we'd eat some meals. Uh, and, but literally, right whenever we needed something, God would provide. And uh, my dad said, you know, I had lunch with him yesterday. He said, son, when, when I was raising you kids, I just wanted God to be so real in my life that my kids would look at me and say, if that is what it means to follow Jesus, then I want to follow him too. And so he said, I just wanted my walk with God to be so real, so attractive, uh, so, uh, so much of an experience that it wasn't a doctrine, but every day you watch me walk with him that all of you kids would say, I want to do the same thing. And so I now lead his ministry. Uh, another brother is my parents' pastor. And all, all of his kids are in ministry of one, one sort or another. So they did something right. They must sure. have. They must, <laughs> well, they, they must have had a model first child, and that just sort of filtered down. There we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's the real story. <laughs> you know, there was one point in experiencing God in the study that has really stuck with me through the years and changed my life. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's this one and I hope your dad's watching at home. But he says that when you want to do something for the Lord, and I'm probably not wording this correctly, but you look around and you see what God is doing and you join in. Yeah. You know, that's probably Isn't the most that great? revolutionary 
it, when people ask me, there's, there's seven realities that are taught in experiencing God, but that is, I, I tell people, that's the most revolutionary one. I love it. Uh, you know, they say right now in America, over 70% of churches are plateaued or declining. Mm -hmm. Only 30% are growing. And yet, when churches have taken experience in God, suddenly they realize we, we were declining because we thought this community was transitioning and nothing was happening. And they, they do the study and all of a sudden they realize God's at work all around us. God's doing stuff all over the place. We just hadn't seen him. It's not that God's not active, we just didn't see him. We've seen marriages that were, in one case, a couple came out to me and said, our marriage was in such bad shape, we prayed, nothing seemed to change, yeah. and we got divorced. And they said, four years later, we were in different churches, we both ended up taking experience in God at the very same time. And we began to realize God had always been at work around us, and in our marriage, we just hadn't seen it. They said God so transformed us that they, they contacted each other for lunch one day and said, wouldn't it be awesome if we just did it again, but had God at the center this time and let God show us what to do? They got Amen. remarried. Interesting, their teenage kids begged them not to. Their kids said, Mom, Dad, it was so painful watching you break up the first time. We don't want to see it happen again. But I was with them about four years after they'd remarried. They were the most joyful couple in the whole room. And they just said, it's amazing. God always wanted to help us in our marriage. We just didn't recognize what he was trying to do before. Love it. But once you start to see that God's at work in your church, in your marriage, in, in your kids, in your workplace, it's everywhere you look, you start seeing God doing something. He opens He's, our eyes. He does. Yeah. He yeah. does. Sometimes we We'd, can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, we don't need to pray, God, come and do something. It's, mm -mm. it's God, open my eyes so I see what you're already doing. Amen. That is so, so well said. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know you have a real passion for leadership yeah. and for encouraging people, you know, to lead in such a way that they live their life. They experience God not only at home and among their families, but in the workplace. Yeah. And I, actually, we just, I just recently started a podcast, just the Richard Blackaby Leadership Podcast. I saw that. Um, and we, I travel the world. I, that's what I was doing in Thailand, just saying, uh, what, what, we wrote a book, my father and I, on spiritual leadership called Spiritual Leadership. And our definition of leadership is moving people onto God's agenda. Mm. And too many leaders are moving people onto their agenda. Mm. A lot of well parents said. are trying to get their kids to do what they want them to do. Oh, yeah. Or pastors want God to bless what they're doing with their church. Mm. Instead of saying, well, God, what is your agenda? What is it you're trying to do? What, what do you want for my kids? What do you want for my church? And even in my workplace, God, I work in a secular workplace, but you have an agenda for that too. So help me know what your agenda is, and then I'll move people there. And it's uh, revolutionary when uh, you just look at whatever it is God's put in your hand, whatever ministry, uh, just you've got one child to raise. Well, God, what's your agenda for this child? Then I'm just your servant to help get that child where you want that child to be. It changes everything. Powerful. And how, how do people do that? How do they hear and know this is God's agenda and this is what Yeah, that's the key. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. Well, for that, you have to know God and you have yeah. to know his voice. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably the, the number one thing people said to us was, I've gone to church all my life. I had no idea how to hear from God. Or I, I said prayers all the time, yeah. but, I, but I did all the talking. I had no idea that God, it was actually a conversation. Um, and that's like any relationship. Anyone who's married knows that, uh, I'm just as married to my wife today as I was 35 years ago, but I hear her a lot better than I did 35 years ago. Oh, that's I, beautiful. Now she doesn't even need to say words, mm -hmm. and I know what she's thinking. Mm -hmm. I just have to look at her face. Mm -hmm. I can just enter the room and know if I'm in trouble or not. Yeah. I, I just know if she's not happy, if she's concerned, if she's worried. Um, we can communicate so much better just because I've gotten to know her as a person, and God's a person. So good. And when you read the scripture, you learn what he's like, you learn what he's concerned about, you learn what he loves, you learn what he hates, and you begin to just expect, you, you just know how he feels, and you, you learn to look in the right places, and then you find, sure enough, here's where God's at work. Mm -hmm. And so I, it, it's something you, I can't just say, here's a formula, yeah. just roll these dice, you'll always know if God's saying yes or no. It's, there's no formula to a relationship. You just have to spend time with them and listen to them. And don't get frustrated if the first time you try that, yeah. Uh, it's not just shouting out loud.
just just keep going back. There's there's no conversation more important than hearing what God has to say. Amen. And Amen. He still speaks today. He does. Yes, he does. Amen. And sometimes it is that still quiet voice. Yeah. And I love what you say about you know you'll recognize His voice. The more time you spend with Him, the more time you spend in His Word. You I do pray, recognize His voice. You know, I pray that. God, I said, God, I pray I get to the day you don't have to shout or raise your voice for me to hear you. I pray that all it takes is a whisper, and mm -hmm. I know you so well. I, rec and I could be in a crowded room, and when you start whispering to me, my soul is so in tune to you, I immediately tune in wow. and recognize the most important voice in the room. What a mm -hmm. word. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You were sharing with us about a trip to uh, China and how yeah. your curriculum, tell us about that. Well, uh, just a year ago, the Chinese government officially approved Experiencing God in Mandarin. And, uh, and so now you can buy it, sell it in, in China. The gov government has its seal of approval on it. And uh, I was sharing that uh, when they were translating the word experiencing uh, God into Mandarin, they, apparently they don't have a word for experiencing. And uh, so they said we had to come up with a different title. And they said we, we decided to call it Never the Same Again. Because they said we've found that when you experience God, you're, you're never the same again. And they said, I hope that your dad and, and you're okay with that. And I said, I, I think my dad would be very pleased with that title. Wow. And so we're, we're thrilled to see millions of Chinese people in China now able to learn how to experience God themselves. What a transformation mm -hmm. of a country that yeah. was so closed minded to God for so many years and to God's Word. Talk about our country here today. What do you see for the future of our culture and, and our ability and our next generation to experience God? You know, I spent a lot of time ministering in churches to pastors, uh, to business leaders, and the key is keeping your eyes on what God is doing, not on what people are doing. Mm -hmm. I well find a said. lot of Christians, I, I, I'm constantly having Christians come to me very worried, very concerned, and and it, 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 sometimes I've just said, now, you seem very troubled. Let me ask you a question. Uh, how many hours a day are you spending watching the news? And mm -hmm. how many hours are you spending reading God's Word? Amen. I said, because well, if you're yeah. listening for 10 hours, if you've got some Christian homes have the, the, the 24 hour news channels running for eight, 10 hours a day, yeah. and they maybe read the Bible for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. I'd say the problem is you're listening too, too long. So there's nothing wrong with watching the news. But if you spend hour after hour hearing what people are saying, you're going to get a very distorted view of what's happening in the country. Listen yeah. more to what God is saying, yeah. and you'll realize there are streams of God's activity all through this country right now. And you're, and you're spiritually starving, basically. Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the words of people will never feed your soul. Yeah. Uh, and well so we're, we've got God's people are starving, listening to the words of men, watching to see what people are doing, mm -hmm. but they're completely disoriented to the activity of God. And there, God is at work all over this country. But like leaven, you don't always see it. It doesn't shout. It doesn't get on the 6 o'clock news. Mm -hmm. It's just quietly permeating and doing its work. Mm -hmm. And God's people have got to get oriented back to him mm -hmm. and less on to people. And they'll discover, sure enough, God's at work all over. He's just looking for us to, to recognize that and then join him. Amen. In our last couple of minutes, you had mentioned that you know, you went from believing God for groceries growing up, uh, and, and and then God took you to even the White House. God yeah. used your family. Yeah. Uh, what do you feel is the future of Blackaby Ministries? And tell everybody how they can get in touch yeah. with you. Yeah, well, our, our website is just www.blackaby.org, and there's yeah. all kinds of resources there and calendar where we are and ways to pray for us. Uh, you know, when my dad wrote Experiencing God, people just said, it's revolutionized my life, revolutionized our church, it saved our marriage. And for a while there, I just thought, uh, well, when my dad gets older and retires, we'll, we'll probably just shut things down. But I began working with my dad, and everywhere I go around the country, people say, we've got to have that message. We, we we're inundated with requests saying, uh, we need someone who can help us become oriented back to God. All kinds of Christian ministries and churches mm -hmm. ask of many ministries that are much larger than ours will say, but Richard, would you just come and speak to all of our leadership? Because we're doing a lot of good things for God, but, but we, we realize our best efforts will never bring America back to God. Only God's work can do that. Amen. And, and we're, if you give people your best, you're going to rob them of God's best. Mm. And so we want to spend our time giving people God's best. And so our ministry, uh, God just really blessed us. And so I appreciate your prayers for our ministry. Yeah. Uh, come to our website. Uh, if you haven't read Experiencing God, uh, get a copy. Yes. It'll change your life. 
It, it will. will. It absolutely will. And the love of God that we feel from your family, from you, is so profound and, mm. and so precious. And thank you so much for a lifetime of service. And thank you, Dr. Henry Blackaby, and to your mom and your entire family for your service to well, God. Well, thank yeah. you. We're yeah. very grateful. Thanks so much for being here with us thank tonight. Yes. And thank you for being with us tonight. We are just grateful that you're here. We hope that you've been blessed by the music and the ministry and the messages that have been shared. Um, don't go too far away. There's more, There's more to come yeah. very soon. God bless you. Welcome back, everybody, to Atlanta Live. We're here on the music set, as you can see, and it's going to be a powerful half hour, so please don't turn that dial. Stay with us tonight. We've got a great interview. and introduce. Yes, we're on the set with Connected Worship and led by Chris McDaniel, formerly with Confederate Railroad. Chris, great to have you here. Glad to be here. Can you in introduce your band? I'll try to get well, out of the way. I'd everybody be glad to. We've got the Honorable Judge Richie Parker here. Uh, Dustin Johnson playing guitar, awesome. Alicia Barbie here singing, Will Dixon not only singing but dancing real well. Oh, yes, he is. You're right about that. Now. That's we got Tamethia Delaney over here singing with us, and back here in the back is Chad Baker holding down the music. Good awesome, job, Chad. awesome. Now I think what's so cool about this band and this worship team, you do ministry all over the southeast, all really all over the nation, and you gather together worship leaders yes. from different churches. Talk about that a little bit and how you got this wonderful group together. Well, you know what? We're all broken people that God has put back together. And uh, we, we found this program called Celebrate Recovery. And through that thing, God just started connecting folks together. And, and uh, we, we've got people that have been to prison, people that were in addiction so deep like I was, to people that didn't do anything, but they realized, hey, uh, I'm, I'm a codependent. I need some help. And God just started weaving worship leaders together. And we've got, uh, we've probably got about 30 people that we can use at any given time. But this is the band that we use on Sunday nights at our campus in Fort Oglethorpe. Awesome. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yes, and these guys, uh, a bunch of these guys were at Johnny Hunt's Men's Conference where I met your husband. That's right. Another um, connection. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> yeah. Another connection. Absolutely. So uh, tell us a little bit more about your ministry, and we'll talk a little more about where you 
where you came from, where God brought you to. Yeah. But um, your ministry, where you guys get together and you worship and we do revivals and sure, I'd be glad to. We uh, we uh, we do a lot of celebrate recovery events. Uh, like I said, we're, we come from that celebrate recovery family. But uh, we've also found a heart for prison ministry, and everybody up here is set up, and we go inside our prisons in our Georgia prisons. I had been working with Heartbound Ministries. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been working with the Lord 18, almost 19 years, and and uh, started off with those guys. So now we go in and we take Celebrate Recovery and try to kick Malachi Dad programs off in our Georgia prisons. But we do men's conferences. I do wild game dinners everywhere. Sometimes it calls for a band. Sometimes it's two of us going to a place in Florida where they got alligators. <laughs> but um, you know, there's we do we do youth conferences, a little bit of everything. Wow. God's just opened a lot of different doors. I love your music and the two songs that you sang previously were, were songs you wrote. Yes, yeah, tell us how God gave you that message. Well, uh, the first one was my pastor was preaching a message about rescue. Yeah. And I, I had four conversations in the service. One was a, a guitar player that I was able to help for about a year. Mm -hmm. and, and another was a mother who lost a son to a suicide. Oh, my. And uh, I talked to a teenager that was struggling with pornography addiction. and. During, in between our two services, I wrote the first verse and the chorus, and then I started thinking about the things that I've seen in, in a Baptist church in Dalton, Georgia. We saw a dead man get up and live again. Praise he lived God. two more years. We've got a, one of our singers, she had AIDS. Now she's uh, given birth to her second child. Wow. My daughter had four tumors in her leg, and eight days later, they were gone. My God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes. And uh, I'm just Hallelujah. thankful for how he touches and, and moves. But that's where that song came from. The second song came from a telephone number. A girl called me that had been in her addiction for about two years, and she was just tripping and falling. She went through about three different phases. And she called me. I looked at her phone number, and I went, oh, my goodness. I said, what is your favorite telephone number? I mean, what, what's your favorite scripture that I quoted you when I first met you? She said, it was Jeremiah 29 11, and her telephone number was 475 2911. Her favorite song was Come Alive, Dry Bones, which was Ezekiel 37. Yeah. She'd been up for five days in her, uh, in her binge. Wow. I was up five days. Five and five is 10. Take 10 from 37, you get 27. I said, Honey, you are in the same shipwreck that Paul was in in Acts 27. Ooh. But I want to tell you something. Paul wasn't worried because the current within him was stronger than the winds and waves that opposed Amen. him. And that's oh, where you got to yeah. get. But if you add 10 to 37, you get 47. And 47, there's a story where the water's coming out of the temple in Ezekiel. It's ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, and then it's a river over your head. Verse 5 is the river over your head. Hallelujah. Her telephone number was 475-2911. Wow. And guys, we've all got to get to the current. Because wow. when we get to the current, it takes us downstream. And when we, we look to the right or left, God is so good. He Ooh. has got grace on both sides, to the right <laughs> and to the left. Amen. And there's trees with leaves for healing Amen. and fruit for eating. And all you got to do is get out and eat it. Ooh. And guess what? Then you can get out because the blood of the lamb has covered you and you've got a testimony. Get back in the current and let it take you downstream. <laughs> and there is dead marshes Ooh. and there's salt, there's salt lands. And guess what? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony, you can bring Amen. dead things back to life. Amen. I'm sorry. I get jacked Woo! up. No, that's fantastic. No. no wonder you're dancing back here. <laughs> this is a little different from what you used to sing. Is oh, it not? yes, yes. It's a little bit different because a lot of people still remember you from Confederate Railroad yes. where you were keyboardist, vocalist, right. and, you know, one of the really popular songs. Was Trashy Women. Yeah. Yeah. I think you changed that tune just a little bit. I did. You, and it, you got two seconds? I got two seconds. Goes, <laughs> well, I was raised a Southern Baptist little redneck kid. And I went to church every Sunday like my parents did. My best dress shirt and my cute bow tie while they taught me about Jesus and Kentucky Fried. They taught me how to like my women on the Christian side. My women sold out on the Christian side When they're all dressed up Trying to hide that southern pride
don't know if you listen to country music, but my husband and I always yeah. listen to Confederate Railroad. So that was for Mike. We, yes, that yeah. was for Mike. <laughs> oh, Mike. Don't shoot me. <laughs> no, that was fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you guys being here yes. tonight and sharing your Thank heart, you so sharing much. your music, sharing your passion for God. Yes. And we're going to hear another song from you. Tell oh, us yes. about what we're going to hear from you next. Well, um, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all into connections and I was at a place where I was really, really tired in my life. I'd been going really hard. And I went to this church called Covenant Life. And I walked in there, and the band wasn't playing that I wanted to hear. The The preacher wasn't preaching that I wanted to hear. Mm. It was a youth band and a, a guest preacher. And they sang this song called A Place of Freedom. Wow. And I found myself at the altar, and I was covered by men praying for me. And I got up, and I realized God wasn't just speaking to me. He was speaking to the whole church. Amen. And I picked the thing, and I called Pastor Chant of the church, and I said, Pastor Chant, who did that song? He said, it's Highlands Worship. Mm. And uh, I, I researched it, and it was a guy named C.J. Blunt who wrote the song. And C.J. Blunt was a kid that used to open for me when I would go do, do youth events. And I wow. called him, and I said, C.J., God used your song to, uh, to uh, help get me free in a place. He went, Chris... Praise God used God. your testimony to keep me from going into the world because I was offered the whole world to do a secular deal. Secular. But now I'm a worship pastor of a 30,000 member church. Wow. Praise God. God. Praise God. So Can't you're going to do this hear song. It. Yes, we are. Thank all right. you. We're going to enjoy it. Thank okay. you all. Let's hear it.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We did. We came to worship tonight, and we're so glad you're worshiping with us there at home. And thank you so much to this wonderful worship team for such just ushering us into the presence of God. Do you feel that tonight? Just a lifting of our spirits. When you get in the presence of God and you just begin to worship, Absolutely. there's just nothing better, nothing. is there? And you know, this is a group that goes into prisons and goes into yeah. churches and goes into, you know, revival meetings to it's celebrate recovery. Can you imagine, you know, the healing that takes Thank place? God. Um, I'm thankful for that. Yes. So we're going to talk a little bit more to Chris McDaniel. He's going to come on over and get to yeah, get up. But um, we have Chris McDaniel and Beaver Robertson. Beaver, thank you so much yes. for being here tonight. Right, Beaver. <laughs> it is wonderful Welcome. to have you here. Chris, it's great to have you here with us and yes. sitting on the couch with us. Now, first and foremost, we want to figure out... How did you guys first connect? What brought you oh, guys boy. together? How much time do we have? <laughs> we about have about 15, 16 minutes. So, <laughs> Just so give me when, a short I, when I was a little boy, I was in the sixth grade and I rode this school bus with this little girl named Callie, and she was telling me about her, her stepdad had this band, and it was Danny Shirley and the Crossroads. And I was there the day he announced to them that they're no longer Danny Shirley, now they're Confederate Railroad and they got a deal with Atlantic Records. I was there. I did not know Chris. Chris was much older than I was. <laughs> Thanks, <And>, uh, <laughs> When I say much older, you could have been 15 and been older, much older than a sixth grader. But uh, yeah, so, uh, but then a after, uh, you know, fast forward 15, 20 years, uh, God brought me into prison ministry. I got, to, got the honor of hooking up with Heartbound Ministries and traveling around, running revivals, and we started just crossing paths. And uh, it was the wildest thing. I had somebody in 2004 give me a prophecy that I would be in full-time ministry with a traveling musician. And, uh, uh, and so I don't know how long it took us to figure that out between us, but at some point we figured that out and we've been doing ministry together for quite a while now. That's beautiful. Yeah, Beaver, you gave your life to the Lord at 17, but you, you kind of had a, a rough I, start, didn't I you? I did. And first, I just want, I, I've just Go got to know that you know what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Where did the name, the name, okay, tell me. <laughs> did your parents like leave it to Beaver? No, so, no, okay, so my us. dad, who Ann actually knows, he was a forest stranger. Uh, my brother Rusty was two years and four days older than me. And my mom, on his second birthday, four days before I was born, uh, they had uh, a car in front of them ran over this big old beaver. Uh, and let me preface this by saying <gasps> uh -uh. my dad was mandated by the state of Georgia to t take care of all wounded animals. We grew up with deer in the house and squirrels and foxes and all kinds of stuff. And so the car in front of them had run over this beaver. You don't know this story, do you? I do not know this story. <laughs> and, uh, this is a first. <laughs> and so my mom gets out big as a house pregnant with me she gets out with my dad and my older brother and leaves the two-year-old in the car seat you can imagine he's wondering what's going on yeah. and uh, they come back you know the beaver died he didn't make it well four days later I was born and taking all the attention away from my brother Rusty and he didn't like it so all he could associate me with was that beaver that was taking his attention away <laughs> started calling me the dead beaver wishing I would go away oh, and refused rusty. to call me. He refused to call me anything else and my whole life, even in high school, and you know, about Chris McDaniel come to the office, it was beaver come to the office. <laughs> and so I've just always, most people don't even know my real name, they just know beaver. So. What is your real name? It's Hillary. Oh, that's named after my grandfather. It's actually German, and Sound, it's pronounced okay. Hillary. I thought it sounded European. That's yeah. neat. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, Chris, what's the other side of the story? Of us? Yeah, of how y'all met and oh, how God Oh, man, all I'll, I'll tell you, he, he, we did cross paths for a long time, and when we just started speaking, getting to know each other, there was just an instant bond, and uh, his passion for the Word and his passion to press into Jesus, um, I, I had a heart for the lost, the broken. You know, we, I don't even think you know what you just said. Your family took in wounded things. Mm. That's what we've both been doing for a long time. Yeah. Amen. We've been pulling wounded people in and letting them know that, hey, if you'll give it to Christ, let him come in and be the bomb that will heal that, uh, it'll turn into a scar, and a scar is a testimony. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, uh, my life should be called tattoos and scars, but because uh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've lived that crazy life. But... 
man, when I just, uh, I was blessed to have this man start speaking in my life, a younger man with such a depth in the word and such a passion for Jesus. Uh, I just, uh, man, I love him like he's, he's my own brother. And probably as close to me as anybody in my family. It's powerful. And, and I got a big heart. I cry when I talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a God connection. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a God connection. Yeah. It really has been. You gave your life to the Lord Beaver at 17. I did. But you had kind of a rebellious start. Tell so, us about it. So I was, I was actually dealing drugs from the time I was 14 to the mm. time I was 17. Wow. Uh, God saved me, uh, had my senior year in high school was a miraculous thing. I actually had no friends. I was actually one of the more popular guys in school and went and became so radical to Christ. I was reading my Bible four and five hours a day. Mm. And uh, what happens is, is most people wouldn't tell you this because most people have probably never been this way, but you can't get that committed to God without God starting to tell you about where your next step is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. mo most Christians, I, I, I would say that, I hope they know this, but when God looks at you, he always sees the next, the better version of you, the next season of you. Right. And one of the hardest things for me to, to, to hear, and a lot of Christians is this, that your destiny is a mirage. Because when you get there, God's bored with it, and he's already went somewhere else. Ooh, that's <laughs> he's, good. He's always so far ahead he, of us. He's, well, he's always yeah. ahead of us. Yes. And so what happened was as I was discovering who I was, he started speaking to me. I've called you into ministry, and I'm like, I'll do anything but that, you know. I'll do anything, I'll, but he's, that's what I want you to do. And it was to the point, I said, but if I do that, I'll have to completely depend on you. And he's like, exactly. Amen. And so I ended up, I ended up going back out into the world to a world I didn't want to go back to, uh, to addictions that I did not want to go back to, and it got really bad, really fast. And anybody who has does, you know, we, we deal with a lot of people with addiction, and I always tell them, uh, you know, when you go back to that, you'll realize real quick where this road takes you. You mm -hmm. already know the end of that book, and you, so you have to decide: Am I going to allow this to take me there? Or am I going to stop and turn and go back the other way? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, uh, mine went a little further than I wanted to go because sin always takes you further than you want to go yeah. and, and got to the point where I overdosed and I died. March 31st of 2002, I went into cardiac arrest and was dead for over six minutes. Mm. And, uh, had an encounter with God uh, and it was the wildest thing and I, it would take me an hour to explain everything that happened but I'll say this, when I raised up out of that bed with a heart that was beating normal again, uh, out of my soul self, because when you go into cardiac arrest you soul yourself, um, from March 31st, 2002 I've been sold out on fire for God and I, and I don't know the number. What is the number this year, Chris, for salvations that we've seen? About six, almost 650. 650 souls since Praise the God. first year. I can say and give God all the glory. I know I've seen over 5,000 salvations since March 31st of 2002 because of what God has done in my life. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing. God, he gets all the glory for that, for sure. Amen. Wow, what a powerful testimony. Chris, tell us a little bit about, I know we did, would, you, both of your testimonies would take quite some time. Yeah, and sure. I know you share a lot of your journey, you know, out yeah. with hurting people and in these large conferences that you do. Yes. And people can find out more on your website. Right. You know, we'll talk about that. But tell us briefly, you know, wh where you came out of. Well, I was, I was a church kid. I grew up in the church. Uh, uh, I was adopted, didn't know my real father until I was 18 years old. And uh, so, you know, you always have that stigma inside. Who are you? Why, why were you not good enough? But uh, God sent an adoptive dad in my life, a guy named Joe McDaniel, who not only gave me a, a name, he gave me a daddy. And, and that's grace when you get something for nothing you don't deserve. I, I, I'm not cute now. I wasn't cute then. But, but, but you know what? Uh, he took me as I was and, and loved me the best he could. And uh, I got, I was saved I was right around 14, 15 years old, I guess, and always in the church. And um, when I graduated high school, I was a virgin, never drank, never smoked, never cussed, went on the road and uh, had the opportunity to go on the road with a band called Danny Shirley and the Crossroads Band. And my daddy said, son, ain't nothing good ever come out of uh, Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. And there's a way that seems right to a man. In the end, it'll lead to death, destruction. Mm. My grandmother says, you better live a Matthew 6, 33 life. And, and I, I told him I would do that, but I got on that bus and my life began to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember calling my mother two weeks out going, Mama, these are wild boys. <laughs> this uh -huh. is a different lifestyle. And 
Guys, it just escalated. When we signed, we, we played for David Allen Coe and Johnny Paycheck. Pretty much if you got out of prison to play guitar and was a country music star, we were your band. Then we changed our name to Confederate Railroad and uh, we sold six million records. There's a lot of money coming in there. There's a lot of attention. Uh, I was drinking uh, drugs, cocaine was my thing. Uh, I've done so much cocaine, I, I do a school thing called Right Voices, Right Choices. I can put a lock through my nose and lock it from the abuse I've done to my nose. Mm -hmm. And then I can show them my brother that was in a casket. And um, just trying to keep kids from doing the same thing I did. Wait, make them realize there's a real purpose in this life and don't miss it. And, um, but I, I crashed and burned October 18th of 99. Uh, I've been up for five days on a bench, scared of the shadows on a wall and, and literally passed out. And when I woke up, I was in my own blood, glued to the carpet. And y'all know that sound Velcro makes? Uh, shh. When I peeled my face off the ground, that's what it sounded like. Mm. And, and I looked into a mirror, and that's what, that's what God's Word is, a mirror. And I examined who I was, where I was at, and I realized there was more to life than what I was living. And man, I went into uh, my third rehab, but it led me in the doors of a church. And I walked into church, and church had changed. There was a band in the church. When I went to church, it used to be a, a piano player, an organ, a choir. But hey, they had 250 <laughs> people in the choir, and they could sing. And then the man of God got up and preached. Uh, he started reading Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Most people say 13 is an unlucky number. Mm -hmm. But it says, if you'll seek me, you'll find me. If you seek for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, and I'll bring you out of captivity. I was there. And God sent an 87-year-old lady over to me uh, at, at the invitation. I was sitting there stuck in my shame and guilt. And uh, she had heard me crying. She come tap me on my hand, open my eyes. She said, honey, are you okay? I went, ma'am, I ain't been okay for a long time. I've lost my fiance, my, my friends, my fame, my fortune. I'm in a really bad place. She said, that's a lie straight from hell, son. You're in the fixing place today. You're in God's hospital. And can I tell you something? The doctor's in. The one I'm going to go see Monday, he's going to make me wait for an hour and a half. But the one that's here to see you today, son, he's been waiting on you. You want to go talk to him? And guys, uh, my life has never been the same because... God broke my chains that day. Amen. He set me free, and I found out what it was like to live free. But you know what? I still needed a whole lot more. I needed yeah. a discipleship. Yeah. And here we've got Richard Blackaby in here with Experiencing God. What, what a great way to become discipled. <laughs> yeah. Here's, yeah. here's a friend that is so into the Word of God. I just, I've surrounded myself with people who speak life into me. Praise God. And it's just, it's been an 18-year incredible experience. Praise 16 God. years to the world, 18 and a half years for Jesus so oh, far. Wow. Amen, amen. We've got just a few minutes to close, oh. and we yes. want to take time to pray for, I feel in my spirit so strong there are people watching tonight with opioid addictions, yeah. mm -hmm. people who haven't wanted to live. You want to take your life. Yeah. You've even com contemplated tonight taking your life, and we're here standing in the gap and praying for you and saying, don't do it. Don't yes. take your life. Give your life to Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Beaver, we want you to take our final moments tonight. and But tell just, people uh, how they can get in touch with yes, you, how they yes. can find out more about where you're going to be, how they can hear more of your music and your testimony and your, and and your have preaching. You, come, you guys have you are speak. amazing speakers it's, and uh, preachers. W -W 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 yeah, one of those. ChrisMcDanielMinistries.com. ChrisMcDanielMinistries.com. Our telephone number's on there. We're on Facebook. We're on They've everything. got it up on the screen. Yes. That's awesome. And, uh, Fantastic. We'd love for you to give us a call. My number's on everything because I, I want to talk to people because it's Amen. all about Praise connections. God. Amen. Amen. People are desperate today, yes, they aren't are. they? They yes, need, they are. yeah, they need the power yes. of God. Yes. Beaver, pray for our audience. Yes. Pray for everyone, someone else on the other end of that that sure. television who needs that prayer tonight. Yeah. Close us out. And before prayer. you do, we just want to say thank you to everybody for being with us tonight yeah. on Atlanta mm -hmm. Live. You can tune in again in the morning at 7 a.m. and invite other people who may need to hear this message that yeah, we've heard so powerful tonight yes. and bring them to Christ. Yes. Yes. Yeah, let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. We just thank you. I would just thank you that, that your Jesus. hand is upon this ministry, that that, yes. that when the Holy Spirit goes forth, he draws and he convicts yes. and he brings the, the lost sheep that's uh, that's away back into the fold. And Father, right now, I just ask that you would send ministering spirits right through the camera, right yes. into the homes of everybody who's watching this, that's on the fence, that don't understand what they're yes. feeling right now, mm -hmm. Lord, that they would just mm -hmm. feel your love, the love they were created to know, the yes. love they can't live without, Lord. Let them just be encapsulated by your love right now, that they would know, God, that you are real. They've just been wanting to know, God, if you're real, would you just prove it to 
to them right yes. now how real you are and let them just begin to call upon your name. You said those that will call upon your name shall be saved. Yes. And with the confession of the mouth is made right unto salvation, Father. God, I, I know your word says if you confess me, I, uh, Jesus said if you confess me with your lips, I'll confess you to my Father, Lord. And, and God, I just thank you, God, for those who are making that choice right now that are fed up, that are overwhelmed, that don't understand that they got to disconnect and connect to something bigger than they are, yes. Father. Yes. Lord, I love you, Lord, and I just pray, God, right now, Lord, that people within yes. the sound of my voice would never be the same.